Previously, I did a video called Siglent Warning about a Siglent generator. It's actually not this generator, uh, but I wanted to show this because this is a new Siglent generator. It's an SDG uh, 1032X. Maybe you can see that a little better if I zoom in a little more. There it is. And I bought this uh, as part of the uh, what, what I'm doing, which is uh, what, what I call curriculum improvement. What I uh, ever since the 90s, when I was named to the or asked to join the uh, curriculum committee at my alma mater, I have done volunteer uh, work trying to improve the curriculum and keep it relevant to industry standards. And one of the things that I do is I buy equipment, I test it, I look at the curriculum, and then I try to uh, provide advice and guidance on how the curriculum can be adjusted to make it more relevant. And I'm currently working on a project uh, to try to provide some curriculum advice in the area of embedded RF systems with an emphasis on uh, 5G, embedded 5G applications. But I bought this uh, signal generator and the reason I start off uh, this video with this is I wanted to make sure people understood that uh, as I said in that uh, signal warning video, I'm not mad at Siglent. I certainly respect the people there, uh, the workers. Uh, I'm not too crazy about the policy they have, but as I said, I know that doesn't come at the worker level. That comes from on high. And so, uh, you know, I wish they would address that. But the, the basic thing is, Siglent makes some good equipment. They certainly have some good people. And uh, so I, I'm not uh, I'm not off Siglent. I just uh, I was just pointing out a, an issue that I think people should be aware of. But the generator that I was actually uh, that I actually repaired is this one. It's the 2122, and as you see, it's working again. Uh, and as far as I can tell, it's back in the pink of health. But uh, this generator is one that uh, I'm working with in conjunction with some other generators that you see down here. The one on top is a KK Moon FY6900 and the one on the bottom is a Juntec uh, PSG 9080. So I've been doing some harmonic uh, or, or some distortion measurements on these two instruments and uh, I actually did those earlier in the day and I'm actually uh, recording this after I did some of that work but I wanted to include the signal generator that I uh, purchased which by the way cost, uh, cost me $320. Uh, this one cost uh, 80, the FY6900, and the one at the bottom cost me 150. I just tell you that because you you, you kind of get what you pay for, and I expect the signal to be a better quality instrument. It's up to the individual how much they're willing to pay and and what they expect for the, for their money. I'm not trying to tell people what to buy. I'm just uh, using these three as examples of baseband arbitrary waveform generators that can be used in university and community college labs to help uh, engineers learn proper uh, laboratory practice that is relevant to uh, jobs that they will be performing in industry. So uh, let's get on with the uh, distortion analysis. I've been doing some harmonic distortion measurements on these arbitrary waveform generators and what you see is the DSA-815 
doing a total harmonic distortion measurement, you notice it's, it's doing it over the first 10 harmonics. The first harmonic is at 1 megahertz, and the total harmonic distortion is 0.43%. Notice the second harmonic is about 48 dB down. This is about negative 0.02 dBm. And uh, actually, let me reduce the uh, level of the generator a little bit. Okay, now it's zero for the uh, fundamental and minus 48.04. Now, what I'm going to do is change the frequency to 10 megahertz. And I'm going to pause the camera for a second while I reset the DSA 815. Now I've reset the uh, span of the uh, DSA 815. On the left is 20 megahertz, I'm sorry, 10 megahertz. This is 20 megahertz. I'm going from 9 to 21 megahertz. Now we're going to go back into the measurement menu and pick harmonic distortion. Notice now the fundamental is at 10 megahertz and it's about minus 0.13 dBm. But the second harmonic is only down minus 40 dBm and look at the harmonic distortion. It's up to 1.3 percent. Now, I have done the same thing, same measurements on the FY6900 and later I will also do these same measurements on the uh, Siglent uh, 1032X. But what I wanted you to notice is the distortion, and, and by the way, it seems to peak around 30 megahertz at a little over 2% total harmonic distortion. Now the, uh, the 6900 was nowhere near that bad. Its, uh, its harmonic distortion stayed below 1% uh, all the way up to 50 megahertz when it suddenly jumped up to about 2% distortion. So. Uh, now, understand, this 9080 is not specced on total harmonic distortion except at, I think it's 1 kilohertz or, uh, anyway, it's, it's just at a single frequency. So, uh, I'm not saying that this is out of spec, but what I am saying is that one thing that you'll need to watch if you buy this generator is that you may find that at the higher frequencies the total harmonic distortion is not very good. Uh, well, more than uh, 2%. Now what I'm going to do is reset everything to uh, 80 megahertz and uh, try the same thing. And now I've gone to 80 megahertz. You notice the 80 megahertz fundamental is going up a little bit. It's 0.02 dBm, but the second harmonic has gone down to almost 50 dB below, minus 48.82 dBm, I read. And notice that the total harmonic distortion is back down to 0.64 percent. I say back down to. I found that the harmonic distortion of this generator is generally below 1% for lower frequencies. And what's interesting is for very high frequencies, that is near the top of its range. It's in the center where the 9080 tends to have the highest harmonic distortion. Now that could be because of internal uh, mixing in the generator. I've, by the way, I've changed cables to make sure there's not a cable issue. Uh, a length or a termination issue or something like that. And 
uh, I guess I have to conclude that in, in its middle range, that is from about 10 to 50 or so megahertz, the 9080 harmonic distortion on a sine wave is around or approaches and sometimes exceeds 2%. If this is a factor, you might want to consider it when you're thinking about what generator to buy. Here are the results of my distortion measurements on these three arbitrary waveform generators. Now, I point out that one reason that I got the 1032 is not only because it's, uh, it is lower priced than the 2122, the, the 2000X series, is also uh, because I wanted to include a signalant generator in this uh, in this evaluation due to some coupling effects that it has, or I should say features that it has, that these other two generators don't have. And I'll talk about that after I've su summarized what we have here. The uh, what I uh, have done is I started at uh, 100 kilohertz with each generator. And as you see, the, the SDG 1032 is very, very low distortion at 100 kilohertz. And by the way, I did measurements below 100 kilohertz with the, all three of these. And the distortion below 100 kilohertz is, is uh, relatively minor. But I didn't use the 815 for that. I used an analog discovery 2 to do those measurements backed up by a uh, Keithley 2015 THD. And uh, in general, what I was interested in was the audio frequency performance of these generators. And frankly, there's not a lot to choose between them. They all work really well below 100 kilohertz. But beginning at 100 kilohertz, you see that there is are quite a bit of difference. Notice that the uh, Siglent and the KK Moon are relatively consistent and relatively low distortion in the case of the KK Moon up until it gets to about 30 megahertz, where the uh, distortion begins to exceed half a percent. And for some reason, the the 50 megahertz value is quite a bit higher than the 60 megahertz value. The X's simply indicate that the generator is not rated for that output. So the FY6900 only goes to 60 megahertz. The 9080 goes all the way to 80 and has pretty impressive performance at the high end. Uh, but for some reason it has a bit of an increase in harmonic distortion that appears to be centered around 30 megahertz, plus or minus 5 or, or so. Uh, the Siglent 1032X will not go above 30 megahertz, and I'll uh, talk about that at the very end of this video. So uh, the, the three X is there, but you see that the, the worst distortion, if you will, on the Siglent up to its rated frequency uh, was 0.26% total harmonic distortion, except for some reason at 1 megahertz it produced 0.44, which is not quite as good as the other two generators, but everywhere else it was better. I rechecked this a couple of times thinking that I was doing something wrong, but just like the anomaly on the 9080, this appears to be real. Now, I I admit that there may be a quirk in the 8815 uh, Rigol Spectrum Analyzers uh, software that causes it to, for some reason, report a high value sometimes due to things that have nothing to do with the instrument, but I doubt it. At any rate, these are the uh, figures that I uh, wound up with in terms of the distortion. So let me now show you the, the coupling capability of the SDG 1032, which I consider to be an important uh, element, particularly if you're going to be using it as a baseband generator, which is what I'm uh, looking at uh, right now in terms of the current 
the current project. Previously I showed how the FY6900 and the uh, PSG9080 can, the, the channels can be coupled, but the one uh, limitation on that channel coupling is they have to be identical. In other words, they have to have exactly the same value. They track, so if you change one, the other changes. But what you can't do is set an offset. Now, uh, I'm going to show you the same thing on the Siglent, and it has uh, it actually has uh, more capability in this area. So I'm going to press Utility, and then I'm going to go to Channel Copy Coupling. And let me zoom in a little bit, make it a little easier to see this. And now you notice you can do a channel copy which makes the two identical, but you also can do channel coupling. And here's what's interesting. Unlike the other two generators in the Siglent, and the same is true of the 2000 series, you can actually set this as a ratio or as a, a frequency offset. So in other words, this is the uh, you can set this to be 1 or, or to be 0, in which case they track, the frequencies track. Similarly, you can set this to be 0, in which case the amplitudes track. But if you set this to, for example, 50 kilohertz, then the two frequencies will remain 50 kilohertz apart even as you change one over the other. Notice you do have to be careful because you can uh, you can have channel 2 deviates from channel 1, or you can reverse these, but it's generally better to keep channel 1 as your master and channel 2 as your slave. So the idea is you don't just, uh, channel 2 doesn't just follow channel 1. It can be offset from channel 1 and still and follow that offset up and down throughout the frequency range, similarly throughout its amplitude range and the phase range. So, for example, you can set these two to be 90 degrees apart and to generate uh, in-phase and quadrature phase signals, which is one of the things that's important in my present project. And then, no matter what you change, they will remain that amount of deviation apart no matter what else you do. You move channel 1, Channel 2 moves with it, but it remains at this phase deviation and at this amplitude difference and at this frequency difference. So I thought I would show you that because that's one thing where the Siglent gets, uh, gets high marks over the other two. Okay, let me now kind of give you a wrap up of how I feel about some of these generators. The Siglent 1032X is the better generator of these three. It of course has some limitations. This particular model only goes to 30 megahertz and something that you should pay attention to is if you're buying a generator for things other than just its sine wave performance is you might want to look for example this is a 30 megahertz uh, generator and it'll also do 30 megahertz square waves. Now the other generators will do uh, fairly high frequency square waves, but not necessarily to the limit, uh, their advertised limit on frequency. So this generator is advertised as a 30 megahertz, and it will also do 30 megahertz square, and I think it will also do ramps and, try and uh, other things at that frequency. The Generators down here don't do that. Their square wave performance is limited to, if I remember correctly, uh, you should check this if you're thinking of buying them for that. The I think the square wave performance of the uh, 6900 is 25 megahertz, and of the 9080 is 30 megahertz, the same as the Siglent. But some generators have much lower 
square wave performance than they do sine wave performance. So even though this generator, for example, will go to 80 megahertz, and it's a pretty impressive generator, the uh, square wave performance stops at 30 megahertz. Finally, usability is an issue, and I'll use this as an example. This generator has a keypad. You can enter frequencies and amplitudes and offsets and so on in numerically, as well as using the rotary encoder to, to scroll through them on the display. That's a good feature. It, it allows you to enter things instead of having to scroll a long way through a bunch of numbers and, and move to another uh, decimal place and scroll through it and so on. The uh, Siglent also has, as you probably noticed, a touchpad that allows you to enter uh, numeric values. But the KK Moon, the FY6900, does not. So that might be a factor in uh, your purchase of an arbitrary waveform generator. But my bottom line conclusion is all three of these are capable generators. And you really can't go wrong with any of them. Just to close this out, I got this one for $80, $79.95 through Amazon. Now, it was a sale. I'm not sure that they still have that same price, but it's, I think it's less than $100, no matter where you buy it. This one I got for $150, but I had to order it from China and wait three to four weeks to get it. It wasn't that long, but nonetheless, I did have to do that. I could not find it in the U.S. for less than about $250. And the Siglent, the SDG 1032, which I just got today, just arrived today, is the uh, more, most expensive. I paid $320 for this from Salig. And uh, once again, that does appear to be a sales uh, sale price. But as I always say, I I don't take freebies or uh, inducements or anything of that sort. I just buy the equipment. Sometimes I used to donate it to the university when I was done. I stopped doing that for reasons I don't want to get into. But uh, at any rate, the generators that you've seen are all capable arbitrary waveform generators. There are at least a hundred other things I could have talked about, including their arbitrary waveform capability and so on, but I have limited this video to the things that are important to me for the immediate uh, use. And perhaps in the future, we'll revisit one or more of these generators in some other context. But for now, hope you enjoyed the video. Stay tuned. Stay safe. Have a nice day.